G'day and welcome to part three of our complete off-grid 12 volt dual battery masterclass. Now in this video, I'm taking it up another notch and showing you that you don't need to spend a fortune for the ultimate 12 volt off-grid system. With a setup like this, you'll never have to turn your fridge off again. You can run all your luxuries from home with you anytime at camp and you can camp for as long as you want, even permanently. The first step to a permanent and next level 12 volt setup is a dual battery system, which we went over in parts one and two. Then if you wanna run your fridge permanently, you're gonna need to charge your battery from more than just the alternator while you're driving. You're gonna need permanent solar as well, and then some sort of controller or regulator. If you're sure that your vehicle and your setup is suited to a smart battery isolator, that's great, but you'll still need to add a separate solar controller or regulator too. Otherwise, if you want the best of both worlds, add a DC-DC charger with a built-in solar regulator, and it's your isolator and battery charger as well. Running a smart battery isolator with a separate regulator means that while you're driving, your alternator is still gonna be providing most of the charge to your second battery. But even while you're driving or parked up, your permanent solar will be charging your battery as well. Using a DC-DC charger with a built-in solar regulator is essentially the same. But if your DC charger has solar priority charging, like this Adventure King's 25 amp model, that means it'll draw as much power as it can from the solar panel first, right up to 25 amps, before drawing any from the alternator. That'll be less load on the engine and save you fuel. With a setup like this, so long as you're driving a good couple of hours every other day, or you're parked in the sun, you'll be topping up your batteries. In part one, I explained just how many amp hours you'd expect to use throughout the day. Around 24 amp hours for your fridge, and say around six amp hours for your camp lights. Add a couple extra amp hours for charging any devices, and you can see that you need at least 30 amp hours a day. That means with a 25 amp DC to DC charger, you need to drive for a bit over an hour to fully recharge those 30 amp hours or you'd need to be parked in ideal sun for a bit over an hour to get the full 25 amps of solar charge. And be aware, not all DC-DC chargers are capable of putting out their stated output as they heat up. The Adventure King's 20 and 25 amp models have been tested right up to 60 degrees ambient and will continue to put out their stated output. To go back to solar input charging for a second, I explained you'd need a bit over an hour in perfect sunny conditions to get your 25 amps. However, you need 25 amps worth of solar, and that equals about 360 watts worth of solar panels. If you had, say, a 160 watt panel with about a nine amp output, you'd need over three hours of ideal sun to get near to 30 amp hours of charge. And here's a quick tip. There's PWM and MPPT regulators, and without getting too technical, there's a fairly easy way to estimate how much current or amps you can get out of each. The first step is to look at the specs of your solar panel. To roughly estimate your PWM output, look for the current at Pmax specification on the back of your panel. This panel here can provide 9.9 .9 amps, and that means that's as much as your PWM can put out. If it was charging at 14.4 volts times 9.9 .9 amps, you're looking at around 142 watts. Whereas with an MPPT, it'll generally be able to put out closer to the full power in watts. So divide the solar panel watts by your charging voltage, say 14.4 volts, and for the same example above, you'd get 11.1 amps. That's a significant increase. So over a full day, let's say 10 hours of ideal sunlight, you might get around 99.9 .9 amp hours out of your PWM, and about 111 amp hours out of the MPPT coming from exactly the same panel. That's when it makes a difference. Of course, those figures are in an ideal world with no losses. In reality, you'd have to think about your wiring and 12 volt setup, exactly what regulator and panel you're using, and how many clouds are in the sky or what the ambient temperature is. Now, there are two easy and relatively affordable ways to ensure that you never run out of power. Either increase your battery capacity or your solar power capacity. With this single 160 watt solar panel, you can expect to get about 9.9 .9 amps of current. 
double it and you've got double the power. That means that if a storm comes through in the afternoon and you've only managed to get a couple of hours of sun in the morning, your batteries have still charged twice as fast. Another option of course is to keep your permanent solar panel running full time and then set up your portable solar panel every time you turn up to camp. Ideally you'd run them both through the same regulator or your DC-DC charger, but you could run your portable solar panel directly onto your battery with its own regulator to top up the system. Doubling your battery capacity is the other option. Having extra power in reserve is definitely not a bad thing. As we learned in part one, deep cycle batteries don't like to be discharged. So if you're running the same amount of gear but have twice as many batteries, each battery is only doing half the work. That'll prolong their life overall. Plus you've got the advantage, if you're at camp for a couple of days, it's cloudy and you're not planning to drive anywhere, you've got double the capacity to play with. If you're adding extra 12 volt batteries to your setup, make sure you wire them in parallel. That's red to red and black to black. That'll double the amp hours and not the voltage. And then connect all your circuits off the positive of one battery and the earth or negative of the other. That'll connect both batteries as if they're one large battery and all your charging and discharging will happen evenly through both. It's also a good idea to run batteries of the same chemistry type, the same capacity and around the same age. It's even a good idea to get the same brand so that the batteries are identical and will charge and discharge in the same way. Another benefit to running two batteries is that it makes it so much easier to run your high power accessories like inverters. Now one battery would run an inverter quite easily, but if you've got a bunch more 12 volt gear and more accessories, having two makes everything work better. Running an inverter at full capacity draws a lot of power. This 1500 watt unit, for example, at 12 and a half volts is drawing about 120 amps. Another important consideration is to work out how many amp hours your inverter will use. And the first thing you need to do for that is to find the watts of the appliances you're running. Usually that'll be on the back of the appliance. It might say the total watts, or you'd have to times the volts by the amps to find it. Then take that watts figure and divide it by your battery voltage. Let's say we had a coffee machine that was 1500 watts and our battery voltage was 12 and a half volts. 1500 divided by 12 and a half equals 120 amps. If I ran this coffee machine for a full hour, it would draw 120 amp hours. But let's say you're just making one or two coffees and it's only on for five minutes. Here's a quick example. So we'll take 120 amps and divide it by 60 to get each minute. Then we'll times that number by five for five minutes. That means if I ran this coffee machine for only five minutes, it would still take 10 amp hours out of my battery. 10 amp hours is a significant chunk, but if you're spreading it over two batteries, it makes much less of a dent. Another good reason to have some extra capacity if you're planning to run a big 12 volt setup. And remember, your inverter will run perfectly fine off one battery, but whether you're using one or two, a great idea is to run your vehicle while using it. That way the alternator is charging the batteries and offsetting some of the power that's being used. Adding an inverter requires some heavy duty wiring and some heavy duty fuses, but installing one of these lets you run basically all of your luxuries from home when you're at camp. Building your dual battery system with a DC-DC charger, some extra battery capacity and larger solar panels means you'll never have to turn your fridge off again. It's the basis for a serious off-grid 12 volt setup, and it means you can essentially stay at camp for as long as you want. But there are two other bits of gear that I'd recommend packing if you're doing a really extended trip. The first is a generator. If you're camping really remote, the sun's not out, but you have no plans to move, then a generator is a great backup. It means you can run all your gear and keep your batteries charged up. And the second thing is a quality 240 volt wall charger. Not only does it mean you can plug it into your generator so you know your batteries are properly charged, but if you're going through a town, you can stop at the local caravan park, top up all your batteries and be on your way. The one last thing I'd suggest is to get yourself one of these, a multimeter. You can always check that everything's working properly and on the rare occasion that something does happen, you can pretty quickly find out what it is, whether it's just a blown fuse or circuit breaker, an absolute essential. There are some more expensive setups out there. Complete power distribution systems, lithium batteries and fancy monitoring screens, and they do have their place. But if you're after an easy, affordable and reliable setup, this is perfect. As always, if there's any questions, throw them in the comments below. 
Hit like and subscribe and check out the rest of the channel for more camping, fall driving and camp cooking tips, tricks and techniques. Plus, keep an eye out for more of my 12 volt and off-grid videos.